Mm-hmm. So in the case of MPLS Sound, even though it dealt with Prince, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Morris Day, and a lot of the people from the Minneapolis Sound Movement, mm-hmm. it was still a story that was fiction, and we had to make the fiction fit in between the reality parts. I know you came because we've literally been teasing this for weeks, and New York Comic Con sure did come and level both me and my guests to the ground, but we're here today with Someone I think is a ding dang genius, and I say that every single time we get to talk. Someone I really look up to, I think one of the smartest and most important voices in the comic book industry right now. So please, why don't you, let's start strong. Put your hands together in the traditional Enter the Pop Verse Theater Kid round of applause, and join me in welcoming the founder of Illuminous, a comic book writer, editor, and thought leader, the creative talent behind Judge Kim and the Kids Court series. He's touched every single character that every fan has loved for mm, literal decades. Join me in welcoming Joseph P. Illich to the show. Hi, Joe. Hey, good afternoon, Ashley. How are you? I'm so good. How are you doing today? I'm all right. I'm all right. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Oh, I'm so ready for it to be Friday. How about yourself? Yeah, seriously. (laughs) I'm ready for it to be next Friday, actually. Oh. (laughs) I'm already already done with this week entirely, (laughs) and I want to go to next week. I feel like you're just waiting for Thanksgiving to roll around at this point. That's, you know, that's part of it. Also, I'm mildly curious about the Marvels. Also, you know, there's a number of things I want to see, and I'd like them to be here right now. (laughs) That is that is a true comic book nerd energy where you're like, why can I not have it right now? (laughs) Exactly. When I need it, when I want it. Yeah, exactly. I (laughs) take that energy, go go to Twitter, and you'll be right (laughs) on. I want to ask, and I want to ask a selfish question to start us off today. You're now a member of Team Potverse, as well as me and Graham and Chris and a bunch of people that everybody watching has seen here week after week after week. How, how did you come to hang out with us ruffians in the Potverse? Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, first off, you're not ruffians. You know, the Potverse is really setting, this, <laughs> setting a standard. I knew when Graham McMillan came over and I saw some of his long pieces mm-hmm. and series of long pieces and just how diverse the group was and the different types of stories you were telling, it occurred to me that this column, how deep I wanted to go, the fact that I would go into some dangerous places is something that I thought would be a good fit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I reached out to Chris and I asked a natural question that you asked, which is, this is my idea. Is this something you think is a good fit for you? Mm-hmm. Right? And we talked about it and kind of like our opinions, you know, really aligned on it. And then we figured out what a schedule would be. We figured out what the outline of subjects would be. So it's presently a six column series. We're now at the halfway point. And then based on how that ends and how people respond to it, maybe there'll be more. But right now it's a mini series. I love that. I also really appreciated that as you were giving the explanation on how this came into being, you talked about, would this be a good fit? Like you have such knowledge on how people pitch and how projects come into being and the grace with which you approach this, I think is something that a lot of creatives, particularly people who want to pitch comic books could, could use a gentle (laughs) reminder. Well, thank you very much. It's something (laughs) that I learned over time. And you know, it's, it's important to ask the question because if the answer is no, then it's no harm, no foul. Yeah. But I was really appreciative and uh, thankful that he said, yes, let's see how we could make this work. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far and how people have responded to it, how it's connected to a lot of creators. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really important because it's activating the larger conversations. And we need to have that right now. We're at a very critical point not only in comic books, but in entertainment in general, in the world in general, where ideas of wages and personal health and mental health are of critical importance, where you're seeing more activity with unions, Mm -hmm. I think in the last 12 months than we've probably seen in any 12 months in the history of this country. And so 
there is something in the zeitgeist now, the ending of the writer's strike, what we hope is the imminent end of the Screen Actors Guild strike. <laughs> and so it seemed like this was the time to have this conversation. So before we get a little bit deeper into that conversation, we called this the state of the comic book industry, which is no small feat. To seriously, to tackle seriously. In a short, a short little chat, but yeah, you, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be casual, nice, light Friday chat. Yeah. Um, but you've had a bunch of exciting things announced this year, including. A graphic novel? What? Yes, yes. <laughs> About Harriet Tubman, which is also not the lightest fare that we've ever had in the uh, world, but congratulations on the thank adaptation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, really excited about that. Um, really thankful to HarperCollins. Mm -hmm. um, for... Little indie, small-time publisher yeah, people might have heard publisher of. That might be the one of the top five <laughs> publishers of trade books on planet Earth. For and sure. getting to write for Harper Alley is an honor because... I've loved a number of the graphic novels that Harper Alley has put out. Um, Swim Team by, you know, Johnny Christmas, um, Messy Roots by um, Laura Gow, um, just a number of books that I've read by them. And so that Harriet Tubman will be in the company of those books with that imprint is really amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm really honored. So I've already begun work on the script and I've done that because I'm now reading the book. Mm -hmm. So the YA graphic novel, well, middle grade graphic novel is gonna be an adaptation of a book called Harriet Tubman, Conductor of the Underground Railroad, which was written by Ann Petrie, mm -hmm. right? And so what I've learned reading the book so far is that her prose is really evocative and very intentional. And she knows how to pull you in with immediacy, not with a harshness, but with an immediacy. And so I want the tone of my narrative to pay tribute to the tone of her narrative. Does that add even more pressure? So not only are you tackling, obviously, incredibly important historical figure, incredibly important subject matter, but now there's a standard of writing that you also have to raise to. Does that make you more nervous or is that more freeing? Well, I think it's freeing in the sense that I have clarity on mm. that. I think nervousness comes when you don't know what the direction is, when you don't yeah. know what the goal is. But having established that goal for myself from a writing perspective, and also a major significant thing is the illustrator, my collaborator, Marcus Kwame Anderson, it's being able to do the script in a way that gives him freedom mm -hmm. to really bring the best of himself to the story. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really gonna enjoy when we get to that stage. So right now I feel it's very freeing and I'm really looking to do the first draft, but first I'm gonna do an entire read of the book. Yeah. And then I will go back and do it. But I wanna have the understanding of the book from the whole 360 viewpoint. I think that's a really, I really appreciate that you're living in the material and you're not just like rushing as like the collaborated, the collaborative stage is the most fun part where you're like, what if this, what if this, what if this, what if this, yeah. and you're doing, you're just living in it. So that by the time you get to that with all of your team members, because comics don't happen in a bubble, <laughs> you're going to be so equipped to do it at the highest level possible. Yeah, and you have to immerse yourself in mm -hmm. the material. And so giving myself the opportunity to do that at a reasonable pace is an exciting part of the process. Does it, how has this project been different than some of your other comics work? Because you have a really great feature that we're gonna talk about, about like independent creators and working with publishers, but what has been different about the the HarperCollins and maybe the adaptation of it all? So, when I've done previous writing, mm -hmm. you know, being a co-author on the Judge Kim and the Kids Court series of children's graphic novels for Simon & Schuster, um, being the head writer on MPLS Sound for Humanoids, that was either something that we as the creators came up with or it was historical fiction. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So in the case of MPLS Sound, even though it dealt with Prince, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Morris Day, and a lot of the people from the Minneapolis Sound Movement, mm -hmm. it was still a story that was fiction, and we had to make the fiction fit in between the reality parts. Whereas this is an adaptation of actual history, mm -hmm. right? So the book is my beacon for how I am going to approach the narrative. So that's, so that's the big difference, I would say. Oh, I can't wait until the project is further along down the road and then the book comes out and we can talk about it again. I feel like we're getting to chat with you at such a fun stage at the beginning of the book. Yeah, yeah. It's, again, it's really exciting. And I'm looking forward to having the first draft done because once you have the first draft done, you can evolve on that. Yeah. But the first draft is always the hardest. Uh, Jake Hefner, we know a great resident of Minnesota saying, not me adding MPLS sound to my reading list. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Jake. I'm confident. I'm confident that you're going to enjoy it. Um, myself, Hannibal Taboo, Meredith Laxton, Tan Chu, Troy Pateri, we really put our all into it and really tried to make it feel like a musical as a graphic novel, the same way Purple Rain was a musical as a film. We tried to make MPLS sound feel like that instead of it being too heady or too heavy. You know what I mean? Also, because I know Jake is a listener of my podcast Geek History Lesson, he should know by this point that if your name is on something, it comes with only the heartiest of recommendations from me personally. Right. Well, well, that's very kind. Thank you so much. <laughs>